So today we're going to cover what would be that stellate laceration that would come in typically on someone's head, but any joint space may have this, an area that is involved with excess tension. And the concerning thing is how do you pull all of these points that I've tried to mimic here back together without placing too much tension on the underlying tissue and without compromising vascularity to those structures. So we're gonna demonstrate that today. In your pack, you have a regular 35 wide stapler. The other thing that you will potentially see out in the emergency department is a smaller caliber stapler. And the difference between those two staples is demonstrated here. Hopefully you can see the difference between those two widths. And oftentimes in the emergency department, because you are trying to pull together structures that have been widened because underneath this type of a laceration, we of course are going to have a significant amount of edema that has already begun to occur to the tissue. And so because of that, even though this looks pretty well approximated here on my fake person, uh, it certainly in real life is not well approximated. So case in point, you always wanna hold your forceps as if you would be holding a pencil. That allows you a better line of sight to your wound. If I was to hold them like this, I would not be able to see what's happening underneath me. So I always wanna hold those like a pencil. The other thing as was demonstrated in the lecture is the surgeon using two sets of forceps, essentially as, you know, pickups in one hand and a stapler in another. That's fine in the operating room because you have full trays of instruments. However, when you work in the emergency department or in a primary care office or urgent care, they are going to open one laceration tray for you. And that one laceration tray typically only has one set of forceps. So because of that, you typically will only have one set of forceps. They are typically teethed or toothed forceps. So how would you do this? If you were to go about this, when we talk about suturing, we're going to be discussing the rule of halves. Well, that doesn't work here because we have a lot of halves potentially. You could potentially half this part of the laceration and half here, but then you would be concerned that are you putting too much tension to where you're not gonna be able to pull together essentially that stellate or star-like laceration. So oftentimes what I will do is start at one of the points and try to reapproximate that point to one side. And oftentimes it does mean pulling the end of that point, hopefully you can, let me change hands, maybe you can see this better, pulling the end of that point and then stapling that area to the adjacent structure. Now you'll notice even here, I've got some natural eversion that's going on, but I also am pulling on this area that's gonna be right next to that. And that is truly what's gonna happen in real life to your patient. So you kind of wanna walk yourself around the wound and try to reapproximate part of that wound to another area. I would then pull this, try to reapproximate that tissue here. And then finally, trying to reapproximate these structures to the lateral aspect. And oftentimes it is a matter of really moving your shoulder, moving your entire body, trying to rearrange yourself to where you're getting the best closure possible. Now you'll see that again, all of this area is going to be pulled up. And what you need to do now is try to tuck this area down and tuck it to the adjacent structures, which doesn't necessarily mean going to the structure right next to it. Oftentimes it means going across the wound. I will tell you case in point, these wounds are always difficult to close, but this is something that I've seen as a preceptor. When students come into rotation, they look at this stellate laceration and don't know where to start, primarily because they're so focused on trying to go with that rule of halves, not appreciating the fact that unfortunately in this scenario, that does not work well. So you really just try to pull as many of the pieces apart as possible and never be afraid that if you need to remove a staple because you simply don't like how it looks, you just bring a staple remover with you, 
and take the staple out, placing the staple in your sharps container or with your tray until you're ready to put all of your sharps to, away, and then go ahead and reline that area up and reapproximate. I'm certainly happier with that staple now than the one that I was with previously. Using this forum, we're going to discuss a lot of difficult, complex closures that I've experienced and that I've watched new graduates and uh, students on rotations that struggle with, so that hopefully moving into your rotations starting in January, you won't have those same issues.